Well, here we are at the end of the week. Looks like we got some fireworks here. Thanks to none other than J.P. Morgan. You tell me what you don't like about report, or you tell me what they said, but it's down five bucks. Other bank earnings we're going to cover. We got a wild stock to talk about. Everyone's probably talking about GL. What a move. Step man do. 835 Ryan Dietrich. He's going to come here and put this market in its proper perspective. It's a Friday. I'm fired up. Pre market prep is starting right now. Welcome to Benzinga's pre market prep. This is a volatile puppy here. It's all about execution styles and strategies. All right, good morning, traders and investors. You're right, we're down 14 handles off the lows of the session. Uh, JP Morgan put a little crimp into the, the market today. We were down a little bit, but that gave us another thrust lower. Good old TLT hanging in there. Not a great day yesterday, but not in the red today. Up 29 cents in 90.10. Uh, crude up a buck 25, 86.27. Uh, moving the oil stocks. Gold relentless move higher, up 38.50, 24.11.20. And silver, put a nine on that handle in silver, folks. Up 85 and a half cents in 29.10. Will it ever get to 30? Bitcoin futures back in the 70K handle, up $530 $530 at 71330 Let's bring in none other than our CFA fundamental analyst, Dennis Dick, yeah. to, to tell us why J.P. Morgan is trading down $4.73 on a beat of the beat. Well, let's bring an A.B. to give us those actual numbers okay, from AB, the trusty Benzinga Pro. Bring A.B. in here. What's up? I'm hiding back here. I'm wearing my green for the Masters. I'm wearing my green to try nice. to make, I'm wearing my green to try to turn Apple green pre-market as well. I'm sure we'll get to Apple at some oh, point yeah. today. But let's start well. with the big uh, you know, earnings report this morning. Of course, you guys mentioned it. JP Morgan. Um, getting those numbers pulled up right here. Okay. All right. As you do, uh, we're down 493 at 190, uh, 493 at 190. Oh. 50. Go ahead. What do you got for now? Me? Okay. Now I see why you're wondering because I was like, okay, you sometimes see stocks trade down on a, on a beat and beat, but this is a beat and a beat. This, oh, is, yeah. this is a four <laughs> bucks and 63 beat. cent S, uh, uh, EPS against four bucks and 15 cent estimate. So beat by. 48 cents there, like 10% on the EPS. And then sales came in at 49.1 billion versus 41.84 billion. So the sales beat again by almost 10% there. So like that's a that's a significant beat on both sides. Um, let's see if we had any guidance or anything. No, I mean, no, no weak guidance. Uh remains okay so the guidance wasn't changed so i guess maybe the market was expecting them to boost guidance so maybe that's the, the maybe that's the the standard this or, or what the expectation is is not only do you have to significantly beat and beat but you also have to raise guidance if you don't the market doesn't care spinner's got it and we i agree about i agree with years them. on this show oops i'm yeah. trying to click them but the chat's scrolling too high just to show it it's all about the setup yeah. all about the I setup agree. All about the setup, all about the setup. And banks had actually been fairly strong for the last month. And the other consideration here is still, you want to own feds, interest rates, <laughs> banks. Do we want to own banks? Bank America, rough day yesterday. I mean, it's just rotation too. So I just think this is like a little bit of buyer exhaustion. It is surprising that it's down as much as it is. I know, Joel, you said it got down to like 187. And I under, mean, this is under, under, under 187. It's a pretty serious sell off here. So I am surprised at how weak it is. And this is best of breed stock here, too. But I just think a little bit of buyer exhaustion here in the banks. It was strong coming in. Not, not that it was strong for the last three, four days, but it was strong for the last two months coming in here. Um, just no, earnings were fine. It's like a beat and a beat. You'd think you'd just take this at face value. The stock goes up. There may be something they find, you know, when they're digging down to the report that they don't like. But for the most part, we've just seen the story again and again and again. It was like the Delta earnings. You know, what do they do? They pop them and yeah, drop them. Yeah, Usually yeah. the banks, they pop them and drop them too. But in this case, it didn't even there was no pop. There was they no just pop. went drop. 
They just went drops. Yeah. And I mean, if you're owning banks through the reports, it seems to always be the wrong thing to do. So if you were owning JP Morgan into the report, again, punish, look back in history because these stocks typically, they might get that initial pop, but usually when the dust settles, they're usually down on the reports. Yeah, with this one, full disclosure, uh, I've owned JP Morgan for a while. Uh, I, I talked about a setup in the uh, in the uh, at the closing print with Aaron and Dennis because sometimes it gets like these four, five, six dollar pops, and then it reverses and goes down. And so I said I'd be stacked up there. I'd be stacked up there at two hundred, two hundred one, two hundred two. It just seemed like no matter what they would have reported, there were sellers out there. And then it was going to go down. And so when they couldn't, I mean, it just went straight down. And like, someone's like, okay, I don't like, so it was like someone had like 50,000 shares and said, I don't care what the report is. I'm taking this stock down and I'm selling, I'm getting out. And they were probably hoping for a pop up. Now this is where you came down to. So if you were trying to buy your uh, March 15th low at 186.48, you got, you got shut out. Is it always went to 186, 80? Uh, now forward looking, I think you just gotta you gotta form a base in here somewhere. And I don't, you know, I don't know what uh, what's low going to be today or to tomorrow, next two or three days, but it'll be very important. 186, 187 to form a base, couple lows in the same area, and then turn up, you know, turn its way back up. Uh, the bottom of yesterday's range, 193.24, not out of the possibility, but. Uh, if you were long and you wanted to get out, I think I'd have something out there at 193.24. Citigroup breaking earnings just as we started the show yep. here at 8 o'clock. They've come out and they are a beat as well. And the stock is getting your traditional bank pop on the earnings. But it already we'll got. Gets... Go ahead. I was, was going to say it already got the, the drop from after the pop. We got the already. drop in the pop. <laughs> the well, pop. that's backwards. No, no, no. You got the pop, but you've already got the drop already, even though the earnings, the earnings just came out three minutes ago. EPS came in. At a buck fifty-eight versus a dollar twenty estimate, sales came in at twenty-one point one billion versus twenty point three nine billion estimate. Uh, Citigroup sees fiscal year twenty-four revenues eighty to eighty-one billion versus seventy-four billion dollar estimate. So they did raise some uh, some guidance there, and the stock popped up to let's see, I'm I'm seeing it, it popped up to around sixty-two bucks, and then is now back down to sixty-one and a half chasing the banks on the good earnings is never the thing here to do either so we're already coming off those highs by a dollar al goes just like oh it's a beat and they buy and i don't know why they didn't do it on jp morgan maybe they're just were scared of on jp morgan but they pop it, again you know it's a similar setup although it wasn't as strong as uh, maybe jp morgan you know maybe on a percentage basis it was but Citigroup always moves a little bit more wild than jp morgan lower beta jp morgan mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I I don't have a feel for either of these, really. Like, I think that J.P. Morgan could eventually bounce back. And I think the Citigroup could eventually sell off. So I'm not chasing either of these moves. But it's a hard feel here. I just don't have a feel for these stocks here right now. I just feel like selling them. I mean, after the uh, after that J.P. Morgan report, if I was like, I mean, totally, you know, different banks, same sector. Uh, if you were, you know, and I'll, I'll just repeat this number right now. I mean, you had you had a couple highs at 62, 6204, 6232, 62, you know, 6209. Super nice number like that. I mean, I think you had to be out there at 62. You're not. It got through there. Now I think it's going to be a battle to get back up to 62. There's probably some size in the book. Still up 54 cents. I'll call minor support or support down at the close. Uh, but let's see. I call support at the close and then. Uh, resistance at 62. So uh, you got the pop. I think you might have seen the highs for both these stocks uh, in the pre-market session. Might as well stick with the theme. Do the Wells because Wells reported here as well. Uh, pun wasn't intended, but it sounded pretty good. Give me, give it to me, A.B. Yes, sir. Give me one second. I was actually going to go somewhere else in the banking space, but let's go to Wells. Oh, go. Regionals. Oh, we yeah, have... do the Wells. We'll get okay. the three majors out of the way. Uh, Wells Fargo reported EPS at, came in at 120, beat the dollar and nine cent estimate. Sales came in at 20.86, beat the 20 billion dollars and uh, 20.2 billion estimate. So a slight double beat there. I mean, there's a theme here, and the stock is trading down a little bit less than one percent. Let's see if the company uh, gave some guidance. Uh, it was up. It was up. Was down too, Joel. <laughs> oh, whoa! I didn't see that. 
was down, was up, was all over the place. You know what the story is? Just fade bank earnings, either direction. We're not changing to sell the top pop. Just fade them. If you ain't fading, you ain't trading. Remember that for next bank earnings season. That's how we're trading the banks. Fade them all. Um, <laughs> That's just... not investment advice. That is not investment advice. No, we never advice. do investment no, advice. And, and, and either is uh, don't, trading frown, yeah, don't frown average down, okay? That also is not trading advice. Okay, okay, AB. Uh, uh, wow, you got the report? For, uh, yeah, you just got it. Yeah. Oh, what? you did. Okay. Got me. Uh, okay, you got it. Uh, Joel's all flustered after he saw that big sell-off in Wells Fargo. So, uh, Joel, I think the low of the day is in for Wells Fargo, and maybe the high of the day here is in, too. <laughs> I, I would not take the other side of that bet. I, I, it is. I mean, that thick stock. I mean, what was the uh, – oh, my gosh. The uh, the straddle must have been like a buck and a quarter or something like that. I or a buck. It, up. It, it was nothing. I mean, this is such a thick stock. And uh, got a whole 56. Absolute. There is a must. Uh, yesterday's low, fifty-five sixty-three. That pre-market low was absolutely ridiculous. It's you know it's been consolidating, holding fifty-six, clinging to fifty-six all the way since the beginning of March. This loses fifty-six. I, I want to have absolutely nothing to do with it. Down forty-nine cents at fifty-six twenty. If you want to get out at the mark, then you get your orders out there at fifty-six sixty-nine for well. I want to go away time. from the earnings for a little bit here because the chat wants a story. I, I know. I know. Story here too. We'll come back and we'll finish the earnings reports because we have State Street and BlackRock and also PGR coming. But this Globe Life was the story of the day yesterday. I mean, this story was crazy. Give us the details here, AB. Here's a ins life insurance company that's been around for about 40 years, losing Longer. half of its value yesterday. Talk to me about this story here, AB. Yeah, okay, so you had a short report come in from Fuzzy Panda that basically just said... Anonymous, too. We don't know who Fuzzy Panda is. Anonymous. Anonymous? Anonymous yeah, you don't know who they are. They don't use their real name. It's just Fuzzy Panda. Fuzzy Panda. Um, so they came in and basically said they had uh, they, they had a, a lot of insurance fraud at Globe Life uh, while they received millions in undisclosed kickback scheme. They said they were making up people, you know, like fake people's account names, stuff like this. Um, and the, you know, like you said, the stock went down 50% on this news, more than $5 billion in value wiped out. Uh, Globe Life did come in and, and try to defend itself, say, you know, the short report, some of the stuff in there wasn't true. Uh, but again, if you, uh, let me pull up some more details. So forged customer signatures on policies, withdrew funds from consumers' bank accounts without approval, uh, indications of actuarial, actuar, actuarial fraud, it's a hard word to say. Fake tests so smokers were uh, underwritten as non-smokers. Uh, growth driven by AIL sales teams were with fraud. So basically just rampant problems throughout the company outlined in this uh, short report. I don't know if, if it's true or not. Either way, the market, you know, uh, hammered it down 50%. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And then we talked about this on the closing print. I uh, kind of gave you the layup on the closing print. I said, in all likelihood, that this stock probably bounces back a little bit overnight because the company will come out and defend itself. That is yeah. exactly what they did, AB. Do you have that defense? I mean, they basically just said, we're going to sue them. This is None of this is true, which is what they always say. So the layup really is these short reports come out. Stocks get usually hit on them. Uh, and then okay, usually so at, on, in the evenings, it, the companies issue you know some type of rebuttal, some type of defense. And that's why the stock is popping back here this morning. Yep, Globe Life issues statement refuting short seller allegations, saying the short seller analysis by Fuzzy Panda Research mischaracterizes facts and uses unsubstantiated claims and conjecture to present an overall picture of Globe Life that is deliberately false, misleading, and defamatory. So they basically said, you know, look, like that's not true. But I mean, at the end of the day, the market, the yep. stock's trading up. You know, six and a half bucks this morning. But again, the stock was worth about, uh, you know, what, 90, 100 bucks yesterday. And now it's worth 55. So the market is, you know, not buying, not giving all the gains back. It's giving some of it back. But I think we're going to uh, need to see some time to see what's true from the report and what's not. Uh, and that's what it is. We don't know what is true. There was another investigation pending on this. So they kind of picked on the one that already had an investigation yep. going. Yep. 
Was it the mm-hmm. DOJ? Who was investigating this? I'm trying to find it there because I didn't follow the story, but they were talking about it yesterday. Apparently, there was already an investigation here. I'm trying to just. Uh, I'm seeing a my... law firm. I'm seeing a. Uh, I don't know. Well, the law doing. firms are all there. They all sue. So that's not what we're talking about because yeah. they come out, they see a fall, they all sue. So you'll see a dozen of those filed. No, but no, but it, it, says, was, it, it, it was. It, it says uh, Bra- Bragger, Eagle, and Squires investigating Globe Life on behalf of Globe Life stock. Uh, stock no, this holder. that's the lawsuits. So that'll be because okay. the stock fell. Uh, so I'm not much. seeing any regulatory. No, I, no, this is a while ago. This was on, so we can't oh, just go okay. like two days okay. ago. I'm talking about like over the last, like a couple months ago. Because I remember hearing it, and then also somebody had mentioned it. So I'm trying to just scroll through and just see if I can find. I don't know if the DOJ Chad help us out here too. Just trying to look um, if there was there there was some investigation going on. I believe it's a DOJ investigating them as well. But this announced this DOJ investigation. Okay, DOJ investigation back to March seventh. It looks like the DOJ sent subpoenas to Globe Life and subsidiary American Income Life. So they seek info about customer payment info and internal investigations. So there was, it looks like, apparent DOJ investigation here a month ago. So that is still pending. So you have the DOJ looking at it, and then Fuzzy Panda says, ah, oh, it's all bad. You know, this is just a fraudulent company. 40-year history here. They're all fraudulent. That's what they are Fuzzy Panda saying. I don't know okay. who Fuzzy Panda is. It's well, a pretty cool. Bill, you see, like, Bill. their little logo. Did you see their logo? It's got the, like, cartoon German panda holding two guns like this. Like, we're oh. shooting down stocks. Really? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's who they're selling the stock off 50% on. Part well, of me, and don't take this, you know, no investment advice. We don't give investment advice on this show. And you know what I'm going to say because I'm starting it this way. Part of me wants to buy this stock. Because I've seen these short reports turn into nothing burgers a lot of times. And you just saw a company, and I don't even want to own a life insurance company, but just seeing a company wipe out a decade of earnings in one day, a decade of stock earnings, stock going up, 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 hit an all-time high two months ago. I mean, it just got cut in half and got down to $38. The risk, though, is all this proves to be true, and some of this is fraudulent, and the company ends up going bankrupt. I mean, there's always that risk. I don't tend to think that's the case. I think it's probably some stuff that they didn't, dot the I's and cross the T's and eventually the stock is going to come back. That's my thought process here. So I actually kind of want to buy today. I don't know if I've got the guts to do it because you do have that DOJ investigation too. If the DOJ investigation wasn't there, then I'd be like, ah, fuzzy panda, who cares? Let's just go. But I'm like, I don't know. Maybe the DOJ knows, you know, knew something too. Maybe fuzzy panda is just now going into that. We don't know who fuzzy panda is. They have had yeah, made some Bill, calls Bill, before. Bill, Bill says that they have a, an office 10 miles from them. That's what Bill said in the chat. So boots on the ground. Bill well, go is, over there, Bill, and make sure Bill's it's not like there? an office with a little paper yeah. sign on there and nobody's in there. Go look in through the window and find out. Just don't get shot by that double-gunned panda that <laughs> they've got on the logo when you're going over there. And that's not life advice either to go over there. But if you wanted to, I wouldn't be mad at you for going by and taking a look and taking a snapshot. But and then tweet um, at me. But I, 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 so that's where I'm at. I'm okay. definitely, if I was long this thing, I wouldn't sell it on it. But this is, you know, we don't know. Maybe this is we all going to prove to be true. Yep. There's a lot of unknowns here. This is high risk. If you're putting money into it, it'd be speculative capital only. But I think when we look at this a year from now, I think it's going to not maybe bounce all the way back, but I think some of it's going to come back. So I wish I would have bought it last night. Forty nine seventeen. When I talked about it on on the show in the closing print, I did not. I got distracted yeah. and forgot about it. Um, I what time did you have to have your order in? What time did you have? Well, to I tried to buy it. So after I, I was like, I'm gonna buy this on the close. I put the closing order in there, but it got rejected because after three fifty, you got to have New York Stock Exchange orders after three fifty, unless you're going against the imbalance. So I got rejected. So I know like, I'll just buy it on the close, and I just forgot about it. So I was like physically put a closing order because I thought they might come out to, and defend it and bounce it back. So it's 12% that's already made. Maybe it back and fills a little bit, which is already kind of doing. It was up to like 58, yep. 59 last night. Speculative capital only, but I kind of like it here at 55. Uh, what's the, the name of the firm uh, that's uh, investigating them? Can we cheat them and how? <laughs> yeah, so that's from can we yeah can we cheat them uh, well, here, uh, game. here i'll take you guys back it was uh um man we talked about this before leisure suit larry in the land of the lounge lizards do you remember those pc games way back in the day maybe that's way before your time you're not going to remember that but 
the law firm in the one game was do we cheat them and how <laughs> so yeah. and, I, and i mean that's been obviously you know a joke for a running run on joke for a long time but Holy, I just cannot believe that it went down that much on this drill. Usually these short reports come out and the stock goes down 10%. This one at one point in time was down 60%. And it's yeah. a $10 billion company. Wiped out $6 billion worth That's of gains. Yep. Yep. I mean, is Fuzzy Panda covering into it? You know, we don't know. We don't even know who Fuzzy Panda is. But wow, they got some influence, man. They sure did. And uh, I'll just look at this. You know, you made a low uh, yesterday at 38.95. And a low from yesterday, yeah, low yesterday, thirty eight ninety five. Uh, so you know, it's it's they're trying fifty. If I'm if I'm trying to buy this, like if I'm short, I'm like, oh boy, you know, I'm not gonna hold out for yesterday's low. I think it's just gonna get thick, already going down to fifty, right? And then if you're looking for more follow through on the upside, uh, fifty eight seventy five so far is your uh your pre market high. So if it gets, you know, I'll call that like half star resistance. After that, it kind of opens up. Dennis is what you were saying. You know, maybe get a little bit of consolidation. But you know, you know what the sad thing is is that you know even if it's one hundred percent, you know, not true, and you know, this stock it's just it it might never go back to a hundred bucks. You know no, what I mean? You, and again, you've got the DOJ investigation. Warren had actually owned this for a long time. Berkshire sold at the beginning of the year. Man, you got to follow that Warren wow. Buffett guy. So there's a lot of things to worry about here. And that's why I'm clearly going to say speculative capital only if you're coming into this. You know, this isn't something I'd be throwing. I'd throw like a quarter size normal position onto it and then just say, hey, if it's a zero, I'm okay with it. If it bounces back and doubles, I'm okay with it. I think there's a better chance that this bounces back eventually to a hundred bucks than it is to go to zero. I just don't. I, and again, you know, maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's all fraud and maybe they're going to go. I kind of think it's more of a case that they didn't dot the I's and cross the T's and you know, that's not going to put them out of business. But again, I don't know. I don't have all these investigations. We don't know who Fuzzy Panda is. We don't know what the DOJ is exactly looking at here. So there's a lot of things to worry about here. I don't own any shares at this time. Kind of want to buy it. I haven't decided what I'm going to do here yet, but it would be a small position if I buy it. Uh, well, while we're on the theme of investigations and things like that, we got to talk some Morgan Stanley ticker Ooh. MS uh, got hammered yesterday down, uh, closed down about 5%. Uh, basically, the SEC and, and some other regulatory offices are investigating the bank over how it vets clients who are at risk of laundering money through the bank's sprawling wealth management division. So um, I don't think we have too much color exactly on on what the on what all this investigation entails. Um, but either way, I mean, regu regulators looking into the bank stock got hit yesterday. I don't think this one reported with. Uh, the other bank. No, a little bit later. Um, a little, little bit, bit later. later. And, and again, it, it <clears throat> Morgan Stanley has a lot more wealth management in its in its uh like earnings and stuff compared to some of the other banks. So it's a little bit different than you know looking at like a Bank of America or something like that. Um, but either way, Morgan Stanley still trading lower this morning by about forty cents. Um, not you're not getting buyers like rushing in on this news. Yeah. Well. And this isn't Fuzzy Panda here, so it's a little bit of a different story, too. 85 bucks, major support. We talked about this one on the closing print. Let's see what it does. It's yesterday's low, and that's where you had multiple lows in February and even yeah. back into January there. So 85 is a huge support level for the stock. I'm going to wait to see what it does there. Yeah, Dennis uh, is referring to some of the price action. 85.01, the low uh, so far this month, yesterday, and then 84.43. So, uh, it's, you know, you just got to build a base there, you know, uh, that had the big down day yesterday. I say they, they investigated. So, you know, what if they already investigated and the investigation is over and they, you know, it just, they, they investigated. So big, big deal on this one. Maybe form a base call resistance. Uh, did Morgan Stanley respond yet or not? I don't. Uh, I don't let's see. No, no. I mean, watch the close. I mean, if if people are just going to shake this off today with a kind of a red market, mm, I don't know if that's going to help. But uh, I'd look at uh, resistance at the close, eighty six, eighty four, and that's really all you have because this traded up to, uh, you know, would trade it up to almost ninety five bucks uh, earlier in the month. 
yesterday's high, 9180. I don't think we're going to see that um, anytime soon. So Morgan Stanley getting hit. Big volume yesterday, too. Five times the volume from the previous day. So maybe hey, keep the sellers, keep on seller, get a little seller exhaustion before you get a turn. But this was like a, a, a big down day, big red candle after a small red candle, a negative market. This is not the first stock I want to buy if the market attempts to rally. Um, yeah, and, and the company reports on Tuesday, so I imagine they'll probably give some more insights into the probe or if they were going to make an announcement, maybe they're saving it for the reporter. Maybe they'll come out on Monday or today and say something just to get it out of the way so that it's not, you know, built into the earnings. But, um, yeah, we, we're, 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 we've got earnings again next week, which is exciting because we, you know, we've been, we've had a couple weeks of a lull where we haven't had a lot of big yeah. companies report. Um, let me get a list up of, of some of the big companies set to report next big week. Ones. I know big Netflix. So. I got it right here. I got your back here. If you want to find the list and pr show it up on the screen, okay. Benzinger Pro usually does an excellent job of these earnings calendars there. Monday's Goldman Sachs and Schwab. Tuesday's Bank America, Johnson Johnson, UAL, UNH, and Morgan Stanley. Cool. Wednesday's Las Vegas Sands. We also got ASML and Abbott Labs. Thursday's probably the highlight of the week with Netflix. AAL, Taiwan Semiconductor. You also got Home Builder, DHI, going to report. And then Friday, we get Procter Gamble, American Express, and Slumburger, which is Slumberger. Um, Netflix, probably the highlight of next week. We did cover it on the closing print, but we'll cover it here for you guys as well. Um, Ooh, it's up sure. five bucks here in the pre market. So, bucking the trend. I'm not sure if there's news on this. Um, I would assume there is because the market is down. I didn't catch the. Yeah, so price target raised at Morgan Are you gonna Stanley say that? Yep. to seven hundred. Yep. Uh, price target also raised at Piper Sandler. So we had Yo. two price target raises at separate firms here today. Although the price target at Piper is only six hundred. Yeah, it's so below the sure. current price. Yeah, <laughs> so they must have had a sell on it or something. But they're bringing that up because they don't look so bad. Um, often you do see. These stocks run up into the earnings. It's something I will probably be trading from the long side next week. Wish I was long it overnight here, but I am not. Um, wish I was. Uh, wow. It's been a stock. It's been a consolidation here for a bit here, too. The expected move we did last night, I believe, is $54. They're talking about a 54-point expected move. So it's going to move on this report. It's just a matter of which direction. Uh, if you want to trim today, I mean, uh, this is like, this is just price target raises. This is not like a, a change in a rating. So you could get all excited about it if you want trading near the highs of the pre-market session. Um, if you're a little nervous going into the earnings and you want to try, try and trade out of this before the close, uh, you got to be stalking 638 to 639. And the reason I said that, it's a, there were three daily highs in a row in that area. So if it gets up there today, you want to, you know, you don't think it's going to 700 off the report. That's a major area of resistance. And one thing for sure is that I would not be out here buying this thing off the open, uh, off these price target raises. And if you get a, like an up open, then you rally a buck, buck and a half, and then you come back down through that open then get the hell out of the way on the long side because you could get uh, down to the top of yesterday's range very easily. That comes in at 631.66. Okay, we got we got a tip here, $49.99. Thank you very much, Chris. It's nice when we get those tips there. We do appreciate it. I believe he wants to talk about Tesla. So talking about Tesla, we will we will derail the whole show. You want to give us a tip like that? We will go off. The, we will go on a tangent here and talk Tesla here right now. Consolidation station for Tesla. I've talked about this in the last few days. When stocks stop going down on bad news, it's usually a good thing. This stock had terrible deliveries. It should have been down twenty five bucks oh, on one. those numbers. It only went down like six bucks. Then it went down and it held the 160 support. So technically, this is doing everything it needs to do because the fundamentals are a mess here right now. Like I said, boots on the ground, driving by the car lot in Barry, and the car lot is full. <laughs> and my brother-in-law was looking at it, and he's like, I've never seen that before. He's like, you look at that car lot, usually there's no cars there. He's like, it's full. I'm like, that is not good news for Tesla. So the cars are not selling here, not nearly as well as they need to. That's why they're talking about discounting prices. So they have some fundamental problems here. But with all that being said, this is not unknown. The stock has stopped going down. We do know 
Robo taxis are a potential here. Humanoids are a ways away here, but there is potential here long term for the stock to go higher. Short term, they've got a hiccup here because the consumer is strapped and they're not buying EVs, they're buying hybrids now. So we need to change that sentiment back to EVs. So fundamentally, the company's a mess. Technically, it's holding in there. I'd say it's above, as long as it's above 160, you're okay. Yeah, uh, uh, a couple things here on the fundamental end. Uh, one, they're, they're building a big dealership here, Dennis. Uh, a real big dealership in a really high-profile area, uh, not too far from me. So they're they're kind of maybe to get rid of those cars from the other lot. Um, secondly, I mean the eyeball test. You're seeing more Teslas out there. I mean, oh, they're it, out there. Yeah, you the, more, though more. You know, you're seeing more and more and more. Now, maybe people are taking advantage of the discount or whatever. Um, I'm kind of torn, torn in the stock. Had it a very small position for a long time. I can't remember I where it was sold. Um, but I'll just go technically here. And this is what I would do. I would just, as long as this holds this 168 area, then I'd be okay. This is still, a, you know, it's trying to recover. But if it, if it loses this 168, I'm not going to worry about these other lows. It's come down to 161, 160, like three different times. So I don't know if you're a two-way trader or whatever, but man, it's just such a critical level. Uh, 160. What if it takes that out? Good night, good night, Loretta. Uh, so that got to hold that. And then for resistance, that's your level. yep, that's your level, man. On the upside, I don't think I'd be really comfortable saying, "Wow, this has turned a corner." They survived all the bad news. Until you could establish a bid over 180, people willing to buy the stock at 180 with multiple lows in the same session, uh, which is far from establishing that your three-day high 179, uh, one yeah 179.22. So that's uh, that's a technical and fundamental outlook for uh, good old Tesla. So thank you, thank you very much. Now I, I'll meet Dennis for lunch in London, Ontario. There you go. What what do I get? A soda? Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll something for you. All right. You're, no, you're I, was, I was I was late this morning. <laughs> I don't deserve any of it. But Chris, thank you. Did very I much. yell at you? Did I yell at you? No, you didn't. Thank you very much. Dennis uh, told me. Not, Dennis told me not to. Okay. <laughs> I've got nice that before. It's not fun. <laughs> uh, uh, but all right, guys. It is uh, eight thirty three a.m. Eastern. Um, should we bring? Let's. I see Ryan Dietrich hanging yeah, out. Yeah, let's bring Ryan in. All right, let's bring Ryan in. We got Ryan Dietrich from the Carson Group. Uh, always coming with some great stats for us. Excited to see what he has for us today. We need to get that intro. Like, stop, man. Stop, man. Stop, man. We'll probably get sued for it, but we need to do it anyways just for Ryan. So if we get sued a little bit, it'll be okay. The stop, man, Ryan Dietrich. I see you on CNBC so much. I almost feel like I got to ask for your autograph and come on our show. Um, No, I mean, most of the time I'm not even wearing pants when I'm on TV. So just remember that. <laughs> We're all the same. We're all the same. Um. <laughs> we yeah, love you, the Ryan. Snap, the Batman with the Batman song would be kind of cool. I've never heard it that. I be. like that. And you, know, you guys are talking Tesla. I'll just chime in for a minute. I mean, you know, I'm not going to dive too much into individual equities. I saw a headline this morning on Dow Jones Newswire. Elon has two weeks to turn Tesla around. I mean, you want to talk about just over the I, top I negativity like, like you were just talking about? You know, when, when do you buy when expectations are low? Listen, I mean, that's, that's about as low as expectation as you're going to see when the Dow Jones Newswire has a headline saying he's got two weeks to turn it around. And like yeah. you just talked about, Dennis. Is that on the bank time. loans? Is that on the bank loans? Well, his earnings are coming. I don't know. Oh, I just the headline. But uh, the headline you know is the headline. That, that was one thing I was so, I mean, I wrote articles. I tried to tell I'm like, he's low, he's selling out to the banks. He's going to have to, he, he sold out to the banks. And now they're pushing to the price. I don't know where his liquid. I mean, he's a triple billionaire or whatever. But that was the of all the thing in that Twitter deal. That was the thing. I'm like, you're selling out the Bank of America. You're selling out the Morgan Stanley. Are you crazy? So that was the thing. But uh, anyways, we got you here. You talked about Tesla. Wow. What a rocky market uh, heading into Q1 early season, Ryan. Yeah, let me see here. I'm going to share my screen. I've done this It's going to be Tuesday, yeah. April 23rd, if you want to know when Tesla does report here. So we're about 11 days away from the Tesla report. And 
Boots on the ground says they're going to sell less cars. So we were in um, last week's spring break out in um, California. And the, I mean, there's Teslas all over the place out there. I live in Ohio, so you don't see them as often. But my kids are like, there's another Tesla. They, we saw the, the Tesla truck all over the place out in San Francisco. Oh, cool. So anyway, yeah, they're there. But I, I threw some slides together for you guys like I normally do. Um, history doesn't repeat, but often rhymes. I like to look at history. I thought this was kind of funny. Check this out. Unsinkable 2. There's a good example of history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes right there. There you go. Um, so we'll start here. You know, we had this huge first quarter, right? This is what we're all talking about. This huge first quarter, one of the best first quarters ever. Some type of consolidation makes a ton of sense. I've come on with you guys for a while. We're up 30% the last 12 months. We, you know, all these up five months in a row, all this stuff. But you see here, April is usually an okay month. I know it's the first half's a little rocky. I've got a chart showing that's not abnormal coming up next. But it is what it is. Second quarter is actually better than average. And look at the rest of the year, right? The rest of the year is higher. What is that? Almost um, like 10 out of 11 times, something like that. I mean, you know, so higher most of the time when you have a really big first quarter up at least 10%. So that's just something to think about. I want to spend a moment on inflation because I could talk an hour on this. And I know we don't need to. CPI freaked everybody out the other day. Um, yes, a big part of it is, is shelter. I mean, it is what it is. You take shelter out and listen, we can talk all day about this. I, I'm not crazy about how the government looks at shelter, but the problem with the CPI the other day, people say, oh, auto insurance is high. Medical services, uh, insure, uh, uh, the prices are higher. Then you know, the PPI came out yesterday and those weren't anything. They were like flat. They weren't worrisome at all. So there's, and what, what does the Fed care about? I know it's more of a short-term trader point of view, but I just want to point this out. What's the Fed care about? The PCE, okay? The PCE is kind of in the middle of the CPI and the PPI. So all in all, inflation to us still isn't a major warning. Yes, those are the first hike is but likely to been pushed back. We still think we might see two potential hikes, but honestly, why are we seeing less hikes? Because the economy is strong in our opinion, and that's not a bad thing. 19 for 20, I don't know. Not That doesn't sound too bad for me. If you're up the first three months of the year, what happens next? Well, the rest of the year is higher 19 out of 20. You see the returns there. Um, pretty strong again. We are five months in a row heading into April like we are right now because we actually were higher in March, in November, December is when most people remember. Um, the, re the rest of the year has been higher 11 out of 11 times. So just some some contextual things to think about. I shared this. It was on Market Watch. I think like one of the main stories of Market Watch this morning, actually. Nice. Um, I call this the Rocky market, right? The Rocky Balboa market. I sh I, you know, I shouldn't call it the Rocky market. I should update that Rocky Balboa market. But anyway, what I'm getting at, when you have a decent-sized down day, and by that, I, I looked at 0.75%. Believe me, this has been a good year. We don't have that many down days. But we had that big down day. Big, isn't it crazy? It wasn't even a 1% drop on Wednesday. That big-ish down day on Wednesday and bounced back. So I looked into it, guys, and it is what it is. When you're down 0.75%, what happens the next day? This year is the best ever that next day. A long way to go. And this number is likely going to go lower. Let's be clear. But still, I think it really sums up. Just we have a little bit of dip, and then the buyers come right back in, unlike any time we've ever seen. And we'll skip that one. Uh, first half of April since 2000 has been, ah, you know, kind of choppy. Hey, that's, that's clearly where we are after the rally we've had. Just be aware. And it's crazy. April 15th. Look at that. April 15th when it starts to go up. I don't know. Does something happen around April 15th usually? <laughs> uh, you know, so just interesting that once you get that pass, just be aware of that. This is one I think traders would enjoy and like. I've talked about before the, the December low indicator. You've got a low in December. If you break that in the first quarter, bad stuff happens. If you don't, like this year, good stuff happens. Check this out. 37 times we didn't violate it. 37 times we did. All right. 2022, this violated. We broke the December lows in, in early 2022. A warning sign. Maybe something was a little off. Anyway, where are we now? Again, look at those numbers. Up 19. Way above it. Year. Way above it. Yeah. When you stay above, which is where we are, the whole year is up 95% of the time versus a coin flip and down a little bit when you break. So there's just some positive, I think, things. I'll do a couple more and we can get it. There's the numbers. Um, up five months in a row a year later higher 26 out of 28 times on the S&P and some pretty good returns yes we had a five month win streak into the end of July last year then we had that 10% pullback that scared everybody and then we rallied so it doesn't mean you can't have some consolidation but a year out it's likely we're going to be a, a, a decent amount higher is our opinion why earnings it's earnings season earnings estimates for the first quarter, in the first quarter, for the full year, we're up 3%. What in the world does that mean? That's 12 months out. I know their estimates. I know it doesn't mean it has to happen. But that is like one of the largest we've ever seen, okay? <laughs> the earnings growth that we're seeing is just continuing to surprise everyone. We're in earnings season. Wouldn't be surprised again if we saw that again. Maybe one or two more. I've shared that before. It's election year, right? Uh, people ask all the time, Republican, Democrat, who's better, who's worse? Technically, 
don't shoot the messenger. Stocks do a little bit better when you have a Democratic president and Republican president. Stocks do a good deal better when you have a Republican Congress versus a Democrat Congress. A little bit for everybody. Here is something from our friends at Bespoke. If you only invest in a Democrat president uh, since Eisenhower, you have $60,000 um, if you start with 1000 okay? Or Republican, about half that, 27000 or a little less. But if you just stayed invested the whole time... <laughs> 1.7 <laughs> are you kidding me i mean like so that that's just one of those things that you know everybody gets into this stuff and i get it let's just remember that what uh, what, what year did that start go back to that because of 53 cool eisenhower uh, eisenhower's first term in 53 uh, so just one more uh consumer strong there's lots of ways to talk about this but with inflation coming back looking at the pce which is lower than the cpi let's be clear that's when the fed cares about real incomes i'm sorry disposable incomes and employee comp are running drastically higher than inflation we've been talking about this for a long time at carson we've said there's no recession coming last year people didn't like that call we showed this particular uh type of thing that said hey you know Inflation has come back and real wages and compensation are still higher than inflation. It's not perfect. I, we get that. But this is still a positive on the overall economic front. So I will be quiet now. Uh, How do I do? I, I might take a breath, actually. He, you know. he always does awesome. He's so prepared. I don't know where he gets all this information from like but there's so much information here that right. we could like go on one of these slides and get, and we could have ryan dietrich on for two hours and not get really i, I literally put that together in about six minutes this morning but holy I, he's right. just incredible i, this I did guy. it already he is I just, stat man i just threw we gotta get the little in light in you know go in we're calling what? stat man figure it out what was your major what was your major stats drinking <laughs> it's from Ohio. <laughs> tell you, tell you, tell you, people with the people. No, I was in finance. I mean, I, I, I start. I was um um accounting and hated that. I realized ooh, I don't like this. But I, oh, I was too. I hated accounting as well. Yeah, ah. late nineties tech bubble got the bug, and then I've been doing it for 20, 25 years now. I've been following every single day for twenty five years. So yeah, wow. I'm finance wow. though. Yeah. Wow, we're we're kind of falling out of bed here. We are coming on the lows of the pre market session. Um. You know, I want to you give us a lot of statistics and a lot of great market calls. And I'm just like asset allocation right now. Yep. And we have a lot of different people that, that listen to the show, um, all different ages, younger and older. The young people, you just say, just just buy, right? Yep. Just buy the spy, the cues, yep. stay away from the IWM. But, but let's say I mean, you got to have some clients, maybe some higher net worth clients that are getting up there in their age and they're like, Ryan, man, there's two wars going on. I don't think interest rates are coming, you know, coming down. I don't know what's going to happen with the presidency. I mean, I'm worried, Ryan. What, you know, and I know buying options and puts and stuff doesn't pay. Like, right. what, what should my, you know, maybe I want to retire in a few years. What should my asset allocation be? Yeah, well, I'm obviously it's different for everybody. So let's just get that disclaimer out there. But now, now yeah. I can answer the now I can answer the question. Um, you know, we actually just added some managed futures to some of the things that we look at. I mean, we we've liked gold yeah. for a while. Okay. I mean, we, we look at gold, we look at these commodity prices. Now we're not saying go all the way overboard in this, but again, if you're worried about what's going on out there, there are some positives. I mean, gold went up from nineteen ninety nine to two thousand eleven. 12 years and sideways for 12 years. Now it's breaking out again. So, so maybe a little bit of a sliver there. Um, you know, and I mean, Hey, listen, you, you could 5% cash isn't that bad of a deal. You know I mean? That's, that's uh, yeah. We, yeah. We uh, it was a great deal years. until October. Yeah. Well, it was a great right. deal. It might, might change, but I mean, for now, so listen, so there, there, there's some different spectrums you can do, but honestly, if someone's, I mean, we, we stress so much, don't, don't get too worked up about the election. Yes. The wars aren't fun. I mean, they're, they're clearly, I mean, they're, they're terrible, but again, we've had bad things happen before. So it's kind of, um, you know, I've seen so many people that say, ah, oh, get me out because of this, get me out. Remember, remember Brexit? Like people were panicking about Brexit, oh, yeah. it was a big deal at the time, but it's like, how, what are we up? couple hundred percent since then i don't even know I don't, we're up a lot we're up a lot since uh june of 16 so i think it's important to to, to remember that but honestly when we look at things we're, we're we um we actually you know what guys we actually we were very underweight duration i probably came on with the same we didn't have any treasuries in any of the models that we ran this time a year ago we actually added a little bit of treasuries a little bit of duration now just a little bit just just recently and i get it yields are still going higher i understand that but we look we we liked um high yield and, and junk for for a long time and that did really well in the fixed income world those are really really pricey right now treasuries are actually fairly cheap they've been beaten up i get all that but again when we look at some of those things that you can get something on some yield off for, for the first time in a while so we're still overweight stocks still underweight bonds and the models we run but we've added a little bit of duration too uh so someone's a little bit older want to retire i mean I, I think there's still some potential opportunity on 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 on, on maybe even a little bit longer uh, fixed income here okay that's, reason, uh... another reason that we're really falling joel oil is just ripping 
Yep. And I mean, okay. I want to ask I was, Ryan I like about this too here because we've got commodity inflation here obviously happening. The one that everybody follows is oil, but it seems mm -hmm. like we've got this little bit of this inverse correlation here happening again where an oil starts to rally, the market starts to get nervous. And I mean, USO is ripping up over a buck here this morning. Yep. S&Ps are selling off. Um, you know, we've seen, you know, other commodities going here too. What are your thoughts? Let's talk commodity trade here. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, well, in commodities in general, like I kind of mentioned there, we 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 do we don't have a problem with them, right? I mean, we've we've got some gold. We we were overweight energy a good chunk of the last couple of years, or more even weight now. Um, but but still, yeah, you know, what I like about energy and what we all talk about, I mean, it's that one group that can just do opposite of what everything's doing. You know, usually bonds were that safe area. You know, I know different people say, well, maybe it's energy now is almost the, the group that's going to give you that diversification you never got before. So so I think I think you want to own some of these. I mean, you know, again, I, I, we're not big inflation hawks. But I mean, it is what it is. Look at the messages of the market, right? We've got copper breaking out, silver doing its thing, gold at all time highs, yeah. oil. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not smart enough to know when that's going to stop. So we do have some have some allocation to uh, to to that area. And we've been in the, the camp. I mean, eight weeks ago when people were saying six cuts, we didn't think we thought three cuts. We said ah, six cuts. We thought the economy yeah. stronger. If the economy stronger, China's coming back online. Looks like they might be. Yo, know, there's some reasons to think commodity prices might go higher. One quick one on this though, just because commodity prices are higher, it doesn't mean the world has to end. It doesn't mean you have to have a recession. We've had periods. Really? A lot of the price has been strong. Gold was strong for the twelve year period I talked about. Stocks did pretty well in that period, so I think we could be in a period where gold and stocks do okay, and commodities also. And again, materials wake up what three or four percent of the S and P. Energy is even less than that. So you got these sectors that are really doing well. Nobody's going to notice it in their portfolio for the most part, unless you kind of overweight those areas. And those are some areas of opportunity we think. Ryan, what are the chances? I mean, everything in this rally is predicated on the Fed's going to cut. It was yeah. six, it yeah. was eight, and now it's three, and now it won't. What if, or I don't even want to put a probability. I mean, what if what if they have to take rates up again? What's the probability mm -hmm. of that? I mean, we don't think very high, I guess, would be our initial reaction, but that would upset the apple card. Now, one thing to talk about, though, <laughs> you know, one thing to point out, I mean, yes, <laughs> the Fed, the chances of cuts have gone punt the football and less, but at the same time, what stocks do five months in a row. So maybe they're not, they're not, they're not, they don't really mind the idea the of, okay, yep. well, do, why, why find, is the Fed find a reason hawkish? to go higher, right? Why is the Fed hawkish now versus 22 or well, 22 generational highs and in inflation, the supply chain issues, all that stuff. Now it's because, well, the economy is doing a little better. We can take our foot off, potentially take our foot off the pedal, but, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I don't, Joel, I don't think that there's going to be any okay. rate hike right now. It's a, but one stat on this, it's a uh, election year in case anyone didn't notice that. And I know we did, you know, B spoke did a really cool study on this it's the, the fed doesn't do a lot in election years historically since 1994 they've only cut once since 1994 in the uh couple months ahead of an election i didn't quite realize that so maybe the fed i mean they're supposed to be separate from separate from um you know uh, the white house but maybe there is something in there um although we still think there's probably one cut coming this uh coming i think it's september i think it's september one um so june or september makes makes sense to us still okay all right. Uh, I just want to shift gears here for just for one second and uh, talk about the uh, NFL draft, uh, oh, the yeah. live stream that's yep. coming on. And uh, you guys, I've mentioned it a couple times. I keep forgetting to mention it every day. Uh, here in the Motor City, right below our office in the majestic campus, Marshers Park, there's going to be a couple hundred thousand people for the NFL draft. And my sports addiction, I'm going to be down there covering the first round. And I've invited different people in the finance industry to come and talk about their respective team. And if you want to hear Ryan talk about the markets, well, if you want to hear him talk about sports, that's going to be two weeks from yesterday, April 25th. His team is the Cincinnati Bengals. I already kind of got an inkling. Don't, don't give your clues away yet, but uh, we'll try and get a closer time for you. But if you want to see Ryan at night, then we're going to be doing that on April 25th. So I really appreciate you coming on, Ryan. It's going to be it's going to be a blast. Oh, yeah. We're going to we're going to, we're going to be talking about the old Bengals and uh, what they need. So I really want to thank you. If anybody in the chat wants to be a guest general manager for ten minutes mm -hmm. with me and Chris Kachi, and I think also uh, Ryan Faluna. Please, please, Aaron's going to put the intro up there and do it. But Ryan, thanks a lot. 
You're the best. We'll be talking yeah. to you real soon. Real fast. Let's have an all cat Super Bowl. Lions and Bengals. I think that oh, would be uh, oh. that would be fun. That would be fun. So, all right, guys. Just, thank you. See you soon. Okay. Bye. Just let you know, Chris Wood, Chris Wood, a dedicated listener to the show, will be re representing the Dallas Cowboys. And Dennis, I don't know if what we're going to do with the Toronto Argonauts. Ha. Yeah, maybe they're not going to get represented here. The Grey Bowl, Expansion. Right? Expansion. Great cop. Great cop. Talk Great expansion. Cop. NFL oh, expansion. Oh. Toronto Argonauts join the NFL. <laughs> I like that. And then we can do this. <laughs> Starting bad rumors here. Okay. Um, all right. Back to stocks. We haven't Back talked to, to Apple today. We talked it on the on the close. And A B, your call. I, told, I, I begged you to get out. I begged you I to, begged get, out to get out. I begged the, you to get out. The market sell off is not doing a world of wonders for I your calls. I begged you to sell those one seventy sevens and a half. I absolutely begged you uh, to do look, it. Look, look, look. I I I made money my money yesterday. I would have made more had I never sold any of them. I did basically uh, yesterday in the chat. Someone was asking me about my calls, and I said, "Oh, they're dead. It was a lotto play, whatever." And they they came back from the dead. They were buried yeah. underground, crawling out of the out of the casket. <laughs> they got down the one seventy five <laughs> weekly calls got down to one cent yesterday. Cabinet, ended up cabinet. ended up closing at at like a buck twenty five or something. So went up more than a hundred times. Wow. Um, you know what they were. I didn't buy them at one cent. I bought them at 10 cents, but either way, that was still a 10 bagger. Uh, Apple, of course, you know, I mean, sometimes you get lucky, made an announcement on its MacBooks, putting AI and all of them working on its new generation of chips, all this. And I mean, when you have Apple, who was kind of a, a sleeping giant, had been consolidating, you know, all this, then you all of a sudden they make this AI announcement. Of course, the market's going to reward it. Uh, stock ended up closing what I want to say 4% yesterday. I mean, it's a huge day for Apple. You used to see Apple move like that, but once it gets, I feel like the bigger you get, the harder it is to make moves like that. Don't tell yeah, NVIDIA sure. that. It was. No. Yeah, you got you got lucky. The old AI trick, you know, the old the old AI chip trick. So it, 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 it was wanted kind of a headline. It needed an AI headline, and it got one. And you know, if you got the headline there, maybe we should read it because again, we covered this on the closing print, but we haven't covered it on this show. One sixty eight was where we were down at, and then they just come out with this AI headline, and boom, that's what they wanted to hear. They want Apple back on the AI trade. Well, it brought itself back big time yesterday. I think you're actually looking at Apple as a potential long here. If it's and now it's like it's got support well defined. Backing and filling here. You get down to 171, 172. Maybe you're thinking about taking a shot on this here. What was the headline? What was the driver here? I'm hey, it, my computer's being real slow right now, but uh, it was it was about AI being integrated into all the new generation of MacBooks, um, as well as the uh, chip. I mean, Apple. I do think, and I, I said this uh, as before that Apple. People say they don't innovate anymore. I do like what Apple's doing with its chips because it's not going to be as reliant on uh, coming out with, the, you know, having to go buy chips from NVIDIA, from whoever, because they're going to be making their own. All right. Apple plans to revamp entire Mac line with AI focused M4 chips. Apple's first wave of M4 Macs to debut in late 2024. So this is part of it, too. I think the market reaction was so good is because this isn't one of those headlines that it's like, oh, yeah, we're working on this. This is three years down the line. These are products that are going to be sold this year on yeah, the new Mac, year. you know, and, and then early next year in 2025. So if everyone is, is rushing out and maybe people have, have not bought a new MacBook the last three years, I haven't bought a new one for three years. Maybe that's why it's so slow right now. Uh, but then you, you see this and you're like, oh, I got to get the new one with AI. And Apple's also been talking about doing some more stuff in the iPhones with AI, this and that. So, um, you know, I mean, look, Apple, someone in the chat yesterday, I forget who it was, but I want to give credit because they basically said that um, you that the market needs Apple to get going to have a breakout. And then that day we saw Apple break out and the market, you know, took off. Obviously, the Qs and Spy had a great day while the Dow yeah. went yesterday. So, yeah, the S&Ps were rolling, too, you know, at the time. And someone a very a really good question here. And this is where. You know, I talked to AB and Dennis a lot in the morning for the show. I'd like to know the timing. Like, what time did that come out? And uh, it came out before 1 o'clock, right? And if you look, you know, at your 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 15-minute chart here, it was just hanging out, one, you know, 169, 170, right? And that new, that's when the news came out. Some people probably had the news earlier than others. 
Boom, the algos caught it. S&P's ripping. Take out the pre-market high. Hallelujah. Uh, the only reason I just, and I don't know if we looked this up yet. I had you look it up, A.B., uh, man, I just wondered what the open interest was on the 175. Because if you had the 175s, you had a free, you know, uh, you know, you, there's a lot of jockeying. Or if you had the one, any of the lower calls, you could be selling against that 175. So that was uh, one reason I looked at it. Might get back up to 175 today, but they are going to zap those options with uh, Apple moving down. Uh, 95 cents. Yeah, because yeah. it's yeah. the overnight premium. So when you're trading yes. and you're buying them overnight, there's a huge premium given to potential overnight action. Like maybe an analyst comes in, something like that. When the stock reopens at 174, you're going to get zapped pretty good. Like you're going to get zapped. If those were traded closing at a buck, and I don't know where they close the 175 calls, but let's say we're at a buck, probably open at 20 cents, 30 cents when it's down yeah. a buck. Yep. Because you lose the overnight potential of, Maybe somebody upgrades it. Maybe something else comes in because typically you don't get an upgrade in the middle of the day. So, but with that being said, I think the stock, you know, that's a nice reversal day, reversal of the downtrend. I do think Apple on pullbacks here becomes interesting now. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I, I'm still, kind of, I'm still long Apple. I understand the the innovation hasn't been there for the last few years. We talked about that, where like, where, the, where would the stock be with Steve Jobs instead of uh, Tim Cook and all this stuff? But I think it'd like be then, the, it'd be the, ahead of Microsoft. To talk the, about. the the Vision uh, Pro, I think, has been you know somewhat of a disappointment. But I, I still think it's a little bit too early to completely write that off. You know, it's a first iteration, but I don't think that's what's going to be the growth driver for Apple. I think it's going to be things like this, like AI helping push uh, its technology and to the next level and back in like the camp of like, hey, this is an innovative tech company. It's not just an iPhone company. So uh, we'll see. But again, I mean, once Apple, uh, you know, got down to like in the 160s, I was looking at it being like Apple is every, every time you get a big dip on Apple, it's just been a buying opportunity. Why is now different? Why is now the time that this isn't a buying opportunity in the top? So we'll see how the story plays out. Uh, but like you said, my the uh, the few options that I did hang on to today probably will end up expiring worthless, but we'll see. Chips are really getting wrecked here. We're getting a chip wreck here today if you want to know what's really getting hit here. AMD, Intel both getting hit here. We also got ASML down significantly here. NVIDIA is now starting, although NVIDIA always seems to be best of breed and doesn't go down as much as the other ones it seems like ever, despite the stock that's went up the most. You know, I wish I would have had all my money in NVIDIA, it looks like. But, you know, um, I, I think, you know, you're looking at pullbacks here maybe to get into this. But we're still at the crossroads here. I mean, it was a nice bounce back day yesterday. But I think we're going to be choppy. I don't think we're yeah. going straight up here. And I think, like, with the new inflation data that we got, people are worried about inflation here again. I don't think... It, I think cash is somewhat prudent here right now. I think having a little bit of cash just in case we eventually get that five to 10% correction. I mean, the S and P's, you know, are still sitting up here near all time highs. The Q's almost made new all time highs yesterday. Amazon made new all time highs here yesterday. There's a lot of stocks that are really strong, but there's a lot of stocks that aren't doing well here either. IWM bounced back a bit yesterday and right back down to the lows. So, I mean, the one good thing is TLT is bouncing a little bit here today. So maybe that helps the market, but you know, we're selling off significantly here right now. And I think yesterday's rep was a selling opportunity. I think the market is telling you that. Yeah, I know you, you were talking about the Apple. I, you know, I think it just, it went up on those news and I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd let it breathe for a while, maybe come back down to 170. I, I just, if it takes out that those lows in that same area, the market takes out uh, the level I'm just going to mention here. And I'm talking just Globex lows here, uh, two lows in the same area. The Bulls absolutely have to defend that. Uh, 51.7350, 51.7650. I talk about the propensity of the market to close uh, the week on the highs or lows. So, man, that's a big level. If it, if it takes that out, closes below it, I think we're going to, regardless of earnings season, I think we're in for more of an extended uh, correction in the S&Ps. JP Morgan now, now down seven bucks. There's no reason, I mean, I can give the reason for the AI trade to continue to work and maybe you want to be in the tech trade and I'm all for that. But I don't think there's any reason to just run out here and buy small caps. I don't think there's any reason. Uh, again, with inflation starting to tick higher and interest rates potentially coming off the table for 2024, and I'll say it right now, I think there's a there's a there's definitely a potential that they don't lower at all in 2024. 
Higher rates for longer is bad for a lot of stocks. So think about what works in that environment, what doesn't work in that environment. But maybe, you know, we just need to cool off on everything. We haven't had those days where just everything sells off. Today seems like that day. Oil is ripping, though, here. We've got war concerns, obviously. I don't even I don't even know the headline. But, you know, you see Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, NOC, all trading higher. There must be a Oil headline. trading higher. Yeah. There's yeah. obviously something that's, you know, broken the last hour here, you know, escalating concerns in the Middle East. You know, you can see it from the stocks, and we're doing the show here live, but obviously there's a headline here or something. You know, they're getting concerned about war. Lots of things to worry about here. You know what? Sometimes it's just better to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to be trading. I'll day trade, but from an investing standpoint here, maybe I'm just not going and just, oh, yeah, back up the truck and buy and go all in on merging here. I think just be that is, oh, here. before we go, and before uh, you ask me about again, we got a good question in here. And it was about uh, it was about your hedging tactics, and I can't. I wish I would have bookmarked the question, uh, but basically they, they were asking you um, about you know like as far as hedging and let's say just trying it. Um, oh, where is it? Uh, it was basically asking you what like a like a sample for hedging. Like if you're doing you know uh, you found a new stock. Right. And you want to start trading it and you want to find another stock or an index as a hedge. What you know, what would be your, your sample size? Like how many times would you would you try that or do you already have everything programmed? Do you know what you want to do? Yeah. So a lot of how? people and you're talking about like beta testing, you know, different strategies. I've never been one to do any beta testing. Zero. Zero. If I think something works, I put money and I try it. And I, maybe I'm going a little bit more conservative capital off the hop. You know, maybe I'm trading with smaller size to see if I'm making money. But beta testing, you know, and paper trading and all that never will give you. You're going to have slippage. You're going to have the psychological issues when you have real money in it. There's so many other things. You've got to put get in there. Like I, even if it's like with, in this day and age, when Robinhood allows you to do fractional shares, there's no reason to ever do paper trading. I mean, you, you're doing a quantitative strategy. You don't just want to let the algo go wild. So, but why, you know, like, why not try it, you know, from even if you're thinking, you know, about a strategy, I don't want to do this from a quantitative perspective. I'm going to let the algo eventually trade this. Why not trade it manually until you figure out if it works or not? I mean, if you're not going to beat them in market making. So if you're trying to come up with a market making system, forget about it, scrap it. It's not going to work. You're not going to make money beating Citadel Virtue. You, Griff, Ken Griffin is the goat market making. Don't I mess found, with market making. I, I, I think scale. you addressed it. Uh, the the main, I found the question: How many trades would it take for you to consider it a significant sample size for uh, assessing a potential hedge? I think you already answered that. Again, I just don't beta test, so I would be in there. And you know what? If the strategy was losing money, I wouldn't be increasing my size. <laughs> so basically, I'm throwing money at a strategy, smaller capital, working lever up not working scrap it that's it but again if you're coming up you know with market making systems and all this i did market making for a long time i ran a small algorithmic high frequency market making system from 2004 to 2010 six years it was awesome you know what i cannot compete with citadel and virtue because it's not a matter of speed it's a matter of handshakes they have the handshakes behind the scenes where they send you know, we know robin hood we know all the brokers send their orders directly to citadel so that means it takes speed out of the equation. You can be the fastest, you can be on the exchange. It doesn't matter. They're, they have that captive flow that they're getting from there. So any type of market-making algorithm system simply cannot compete because you don't have those handshake agreements. So I, I don't like payment for order flow. I don't like, I've spoken about all that stuff publicly lots of times in front of regulators. It doesn't work. But if we're just going back to just beta testing here, get in there, get dirty, get some real money in there. Algorithmic trading is difficult to make money with here now. You don't find a lot of systems that just, you know, or like plug them in and they're just going to make money continuously here. You know, unless you're Citadel, unless you're some of the big guns, it's tough to compete. I have went from, you know, a lot of algorithmic trading to almost no algorithmic trading because I can't compete. That's the, you know, that's just new me. I, I feel yeah, like I'm no a yep. human, but I, it's funny. You know, I was trading so algorithmic. People are like, oh, you got to trade algorithmically in 2024. What are you doing, Dennis? No, you know when you had to trade algorithmically was in 2004. That's those years. I made my years back then, 2005. I made my life back then, 2006, 2007, 2008. I was trading algorithmically back then because there wasn't many people doing it. 
Now yep. everybody's trying to do it. Yep. It, 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 the competition's intense, but again, it's all because the market flow, the, the plumbing has changed. The dynamics have changed. It's went from on exchange trading to off exchange trading. The majority of your trades happen off exchange. I can't get those flaws. I cannot trade against Robinhood. I cannot trade with you. If you're a Robinhood account, I can't trade against you. I can't take the other side of your order because you know you've got Citadel and the other companies doing it all. You can't so at night. Is you, all can't, you can't at night, right? You can't in the middle of the night. No, but uh, no, there's market makers, no, but that's a market makers too. You're not getting yeah, in there. Well, you're there's right. a market maker in the middle. They want a middleman on every trade. It's completely ridiculous. You know, they don't want they don't want trader A, retail guy trading with trader B. They want trader A trading to the market maker and trader B trading to the market maker, and then we cross and we grab the spread. That's what it is. They want to be okay. a middleman on every single trade, and it's brutal. Joel, give All us right. a preview for next week. What can we expect? Okay, so uh, next week for guests, we got Paul LaMonica, of course, uh, T3 uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we got a very nice young lady who's going to talk uh, the healthcare sector, Aurelis Augusto. The cow guy. You guys ask for the cow guy? You get the cow guy on Thursday. And then to wrap things up on Friday, an options expiration, none other than CC Legator. Dennis, I don't know if you're looking at my screen, but uh, Paul LaMonica wrote an article two weeks ago in Barron's uh, on uh, uh, DJT. Have you looked at that stock lately, Dennis? Well, we don't even have to look at it, Joel. We know the stock's going to continue to go down. We've talked about this. When the stock is 800% to borrow, that everybody knows. It's just a matter of does it go down fast enough to make up, you know, if you're shorting the thing, getting the borrow, it has to go down, what do we say, a buck a day to break even? So if you're just flat out long this thing, it's basically borderline insanity. So you got to be long and, and then lending. it. If you're long and lending it, there's an argument there that maybe you're going to make more money on the lending than the stock goes down. But either way, the stock was going down. We knew that stock was going down. So it doesn't make any sense. And now short squeezes happen. The thing you go 32 to 50, sure, you know, short squeezes can happen. That's what's happened before. The story here, folks, you know, it's just too, it's just too highly valued. Sorry, you know, to all the you know Trump supporters or DJT or whatever it is. You know, I know you guys are, you know, and, and a lot of people believe, you know, but it, it comes down to fundamentals. This is what, you know, stock investing does in the, in the long run here. And the long run, when you see your stock and it's 800% to borrow it, there's a very, 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 very high likelihood that the stock is going to go down. Because people don't pay 800% to borrow stocks that are going higher. Yeah, you mentioned that that uh, that strategy of maybe buying it and lending it out. You know, you would lose. That would be the only way I would be long this is so I could get 400%, and maybe just maybe it goes down slower than my making money on the lending portion of it. And I guarantee you, there's some people doing that. They may still be losing money because I think it's falling faster than the buck a day. So they're probably still losing. All right, we're well, over time. We're going to end things up here, folks. Let's get back in the 5,200 handle. Let's defend that double bottom from Wednesday and Thursday. Let's get away from this 5,200 to end the week. So uh, great, great, great to talk to you guys. Once again, if you want to be a guest general manager, email me, joel at benzinga.com, and uh, I'll get back to you. We have some teams. A lot of teams are already taken, so if you want to do it, you better email me soon. So, everybody, good luck. We'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Live trading will start right now.